everyone, this is Nitro. In this video, I'm going to go over what has happened with my account in Language Mobile over the past two weeks. And to start this off, I'm going to go over what I got from gambling as well as from the Time Space Merchant. So now I'm going to do some gambling for this week. And there's only one thing I'm really interested in gambling for, which is the headgear. Let's give it a shot and see what I get. Frostfire Crown is ore. Soul Stealer Headdress, I'll keep. And another Frostfire Crown. I get so many of these garbage items. Specifically the Frostfire Crown. I mean, I keep getting them over and over again. And it's not like they're worth keeping. Because the effect is when you initiate battle, the damage taken is reduced. You take less damage when you attack. That's so useless for... Uh, for mages and holy and demon class characters. So... Especially when they have the choice of like a Tenyo's headdress and whatnot. So let's order those two. It's fine. I mean, at the very least, I got a frost. I got another Soul Stealer headdress. I do have three level one versions of them, but you never know. I might have to build up another one or two. Right now, I'm using tons of Tenyo's headdresses, but it may very well be that I want more Soul Stealer headdresses in the future. Right now I do have one built up on Bozel, and I do have a second one built up, which is not currently used. But we'll wait and see. Like These are definitely worth keeping. They're not that common at the very least, so I'll hold on to them. So it is now the first of the new year of 2021, and I am going into the store to buy my SSR accessories. So let's see what it gets. The first one is a Lone Star Armlet. And I can only buy one SSR accessory here for now, which gives me an elven belt. So unfortunately, both items were garbage. I don't have enough to purchase the second one, so that will have to wait until the banner of the month with Rosenseal and Clotaire. Um, so I guess that will be it for now. I mean, I might as well pick up the new item from the guild store as well, the runestone here. And I think that's everything I can buy at this time. So hopefully I'll get a better SSR accessory later, but we'll see. Let's now take a look at the Time Space Merchant and see what goodies there are to buy this week. And as always, I'm going to trade for the 12,000 star coins first before looking at the goodies. Um, yeah, let's buy the debug gloves. Skip, 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 skip. And get automaton. Bond elves. And I might as well buy the Mystery Stone pack, I guess. All right, refresh. Human Voucher. Big Bro Burger. Rare Enchant Gift Pack. I always am torn on these. Ah, to buy or not to buy? That is the question. And which one to buy? If I do buy, Let's just buy Breeze, I guess. Hold on to it. I'm gonna hold on rather than buy... Well, I could buy the Bond Elves, but... Yeah, whatever. Let's buy it. Refresh. Sweet clearance tickets. Ooh. Cheap Dark Necklaces. Another set of Angan Automatins. And I'm not going to buy any of the others. And refresh to the final page instead. Oh, skin vouchers. No gates of fate, but I did get some skin vouchers at least. That's better than nothing. And I actually carry over some star coins to the next week. Because overall, kind of iffy on the purchases this week in the time traveling merchant. But you know what? I got 10 skin vouchers. I'm still not going to complain. I obviously wish I'd get more gates of fate runs, but this is okay too. So next up is to check out the Time Space Merchant for this week on January 10th. So let's jump in and see what goodies she will offer me. So let's bring up the exchange page and exchange for the 12,000 star coins to start off. Okay, so now figure out what to buy. Um, This first page is quite dry. I mean, I'll buy the crystals, I suppose. 
just figure out which crystal. I have so many of these crystals. <laughs> but there we go. I may as well just buy the Develop Gloves. And I don't really need it, but I'll spend it because of trying to reach the next merchant level. So maybe I'll just buy... Uh, Arcane Might? I don't know. Okay, so that's the first page. Refresh. Very dry. Second page has a Wheel of Fates. Second page has an Arena Attack Stone, which I'll pick up. Outfit points, I already have six, so I don't need to buy those. Might as well buy the burger and some extra gold. So at least I got some Wheels of Fate this time. Next page. More outfit points, pass on that. Runestone shards. I'm not in too much of a rush for additional runestones. Um, I have five of them. Oh no, no, sorry. I have five runestone shards. How many runestones do I currently have? Let's take a look. So if I select the hero, go into upgrade class. I have seven runestones on hand, so no, I don't need those runestone shards at all. I mean, there are a bunch of heroes I could use them on, don't get me wrong. Uh, but if I were building up, you know, SRs, whatever, I would definitely want the runestone shards, but I'm not, so I'll skip that. Nope, oh, this one I actually do need, because I'm very, very low on a lot of these uh, spirits. I wish I knew which spirit um, Risen Seal used, or will use. Well, regardless, I'll just buy one. And refresh the final page, where I see an SSR weapon for 50 seconds with star coins, but I don't have the star coins anymore. So I guess I'll buy the burger, another pure heart selection pack. Heart there, and now it's a question of whether I should save up some mastery stone points or just buy. I think I'll just pick it up. Here. Mastery stone pack. So this week there was one, uh, what's it called? One set of Gate of Fate runs, right? Three Gate of Fate runs. So. Overall, can't complain. Everything else was kind of garbage, but those three Gate of Fate runs is always nice to get. So in the final week of December to, I guess, the initial portion of 2021, I got a Lone Star Armlet and Elven Belt from the monthly items. I haven't done my third Memory Shard purchase yet because I didn't have enough Memory Shards, but I'll do it this week for sure when Risen Seal and Clotera released and I draw like crazy on that banner. Um, Timeless Trial of that week gave me a Lone Star Armlet which was ore and the gambles well we saw it earlier it was just one soul stealer headdress and 200 ore because it was Frostfire Crowns. In terms of SSRs um, items from Daily Dragon uh, runs and world map events and drunk battles I went from getting, I guess, basically three the previous week to 17 in the current week. So it pretty much just made up for that terrible luck that previous week. Um, most of it was useless items, but there were a few that I kept. Uh, of the 17, I kept five of them. And one of them was a goddess left hand, because I'm building up my seventh goddess left hand since Frozen Seal is coming out. One of them was a King's Crown, which was my 8th one. Uh, I don't know if I'm even going to use it, but King's Crowns are always nice because there's just so many Assassin, Archers, and Flyers that can use King's Crown. I also got a Carbon Fiber Helmet that I am keeping because I accidentally um, destroyed my old one. I got my very 4th Elder's Bow from the world map. I mean, I used two of them for sure, right? One on the Omega, one on the Lustreal. Third and fourth aren't really used, but you know, <laughs> I mean, I 
what I've done is I gave one to Farakia and I gave one to Narm so that you know, they might potentially have three range attacks to make it more convenient for using. And then the very last SSR that I kept of the 17 was a Demon Slayer. This was my second Demon Slayer. Neither Demon Slayer is actually built, they're both level 20. But having two Demon Slayers for potential use is always nice because you can dispel buffs. So you can, yeah, you can dispel buffs from enemies, right? That you crit hit or whatever. So you never know, I might build it up. And as for the crystal and voucher increase, this part was kind of insane. From 37 vouchers and 25,824 crystals, I went up to 64 vouchers and 30,988 crystals. This is actually an increase of 27 vouchers with 5,164 crystals. The reason I got that much was because I did a lot of new Gate of Fate runs. So every character whose Gate of Fate I unlocked was giving me extra vouchers and extra crystals. So it just added up to a crazy amount of new additions there. By comparison, the following week's crystal increase was basically minimal. It went from 30,988 crystals to 32,117 crystals. Voucher count increase was still very, very high, from 64 vouchers to 85. So this was an increase of 21 vouchers and 1,129 crystals. The crystal count increase was low in large part because this was a Macho Lotto week. Right? So I did the Macho Lotto gambles there, which used up some crystals. And I also did some purchases in the Time Space Merchant, of course, which also used up crystals. So it should have been around, I think, you know, a bit over 2,000, roughly, or above 2,000 before those purchases. After those purchases, it dropped dramatically to 1,129 crystal increase. SSR-wise, okay, um, last week was 17. This week continued to remain very, very high. It was 16 plus 2, which really surprised me. Keep in mind though, I think both weeks actually had three dragon run dailies, not two. So there were a bit, some mistakes there, right? There was that three, you know, plus one gate of fate run, sorry, plus one uh, dragon runs every day, along with, you know, plus one anarchy runs, I think. So that's also led to a SSR difference. So keep that in mind. In any case, um, for this week, Gamble-wise, I actually gambled three weapon gambles as well as three helm gambles. Um, and the three weapon gambles gave me an Astaroth, the helm gambles were garbage. Time as trial of this week was an Eye of the Beholder. I kept it, but it's not really anything amazing. And other than that, of the 16 SSRs I got this week, the only two that I kept was another Goddess Left Hand, raising my 7th Goddess Left Hand to level 40, and an Aeolus' Battle Armor, which makes my level, my fourth one a level 30. Okay. Actually, I think I also kept the Vampire Mask on Wednesday. So I actually kept three SSRs. So the other 16, uh, sorry, the other 13 plus 2, so the other 15 SSRs were all turned into ore. Um, the plus 2 came from the fact that I got two random accessory box SSRs. Okay. One of them was a Slayer's Emblem. And the other was an Elven Belt. Both were Ord. So, in terms of gear that I'm still looking at, it's just these ones. Okay. Um, first of all, Crystal Beasting is not yet out, but it will be coming out on the Equipment Banner at the end of this month. And that's definitely an SSR that I'm looking forward to getting. Um, I'm going to want one on both Zerda as well as Sigma because they're going to be assassins and the fact that these items can allow you to reduce the enemy's defense by 20% can allow you to do a lot more damage than plus 10% attack. I'm going to want a second balanced blade for Bernhard. Right? Uh, this is more of a future planning thing because Bernhard is going to get his 3C which is like an even more powerful faction buff among other things. So when that comes out, Bernhard becomes much more viable and I'm going to definitely want a balanced blade for him in case I use him for sword dancing. He, I had marked here, Hiei needing an extreme magic bow. That will no longer really be the case once I switch Zerida to the crystal beast thing. Because I do have an extreme magic bow on Zerida right now. So you can say that I'm going to remove that line, that column from here very shortly. Even though I only have one extreme magic bow in two years, you know, it's going to work out at least for me. 
As for the accessories, you know, still need lots of Twilight Stars, as many as I can get. Still need one or two more juggler plushies. I think it's just one now at this point. And still need as many Swords with Metals as I can possibly get. Right? I have listed for Swords with Metal Bozo, Landius, and Rain, but way more heroes can use it. Like I mentioned, for example, Freya can use it. Like it, almost any tank can use it. Juggler can use it. Freya can use it. Landius can use it. Hilda can use it. Right? Um, yeah. Luna can use it. Like anyone who does, anyone who does magic defense or defense conversion, and wants to avoid getting silenced, and anyone who does like AOE attacks and any tanks. So it's a huge list of characters that can use Swords with Metal. So the more of those I can get, the better. And also put onto this list is the return of the Apex boots, because I would now want to get a second pair of Apex boots for Bernhard. So make a Bernhardt a 4 mobility character with a balanced blade for potential 2 ring sword dance. And just wanted to mention some interesting enchants. This one was just a terrible nightmare of an enchant. I'm trying to enchant a new weapon for Landius. Right? So Landius wants to get attack and hit points on the weapon preferably. Maybe defense as well, right? So I did 300 SR enchants as well as 25 SSR enchants. And out of all of those, the best one, unfortunately, that I got was just a 13% attack increase. So huge number of enchants, only got one. You can, all, you can really just say it's a decent one. It's not amazing or anything like that. I got a lot better. Um, <laughs> I actually had very high int enchants multiple times. In these enchants so it just shows the rng aspect of this um like 15 percent int came up three times pretty much and this was one of the examples where it was 11 percent int with an additional 18 int and six percent hit points if this was an int based hero this would be an amazing enchant but since it was on my landius tank i couldn't keep it and i saw like 15 percent int twice i think I think one time was 14% int, one time was 15% int. So the rolls were getting good rolls, it just wasn't the right thing. Nonetheless, other than this frustration with the enchant for a new weapon for Landius, I actually got some good Gift of Eternal Life enchants uh, recently, in these past two weeks. So you can see the one on the left with clocks offers 15% int. Right? That was done with an SR scroll. SR's clock scroll, so you know that one paid off. And on the right, I think I actually used the uh, SSR scroll, so it was an SSR breeze scroll, but it gave 13% int with an additional 17 int, so you can say this is pretty much pretty close to 16% intelligence, and another 5% defense hit boost. Could it be, you know, oh yeah, of course, if it was 10% hit points, it would be even better than this, but 5% defense cannot complain at all. So two good enchants there at least. And I just wanted to mention once again all the heroes that I'm grinding or looking at grinding up in the next, I guess, four months, four or five months. Um, this is not even a comprehensive list of all the heroes I'm considering building up. So that's how insane it is. Keep in mind that each hero takes roughly three months to build up from three stars. So I don't even know what I'm going to be doing with regards to this. But for example, Florentia, Lenin, Akaya, Reen, Sigma, Listel, and Sage of the Trees are all existing heroes that I want to build up to 6 stars. And then upcoming heroes that I want to build up to 6 stars, just including the female ones, not even the male ones, which is Vincent and Clotin. Vincent and Kruger. Um, the female characters I want to build up is Rosenseal, Mariel, Lolly Jessica, Hilda, Himiko, as well as Patsir. So I have absolutely no idea what I'm going to do, <laughs> right? There's just too many heroes that are interesting that are coming out. I mean, I'm very much going to have to start figuring out how to narrow down my focus. I haven't quite decided yet. And in large part, that's because it's going to depend on my luck with the upcoming banners. So, I mean, Rosenseal is pretty much guaranteed. Mariel and Lolly Jessica will very much depend on luck with the banners. Hilda will depend on whether I get both Hilda and Werner at the same time on that banner, right? Himiko assumes that I'm going to get Himiko on her collaboration banner. 
you know, uh, Vincent and Kruger, we're gonna see. I'm gonna just gonna go off for one of those two, so that's why I don't have either of them put in here. And your male, male characters in the first place. And then Patsir and Toa is going to be all the way in, what, um, June? July? Well, in any case, that's so far off that hopefully I'll get Patsir, because I'm not that interested in Toa. And putting it kind of into perspective, though, currently I am at the pity rates from the Albedo Shaltier banner. Just wanted to briefly mention that. So we're going to see how my luck goes on Thursday, because I very much need both heroes on that banner. In order to use Rosenseal, you need Clotaire. And they, yeah, they just bond each other up. So I really need them both. Oh boy. <laughs> Let's pray and hope that I get them very, very quickly. So at this point, I'm going to jump into the game and briefly mention things about my account. So, you know, quickly mentioning, you know, I wanted to mention just, I said I had like a lot of heroes at five stars. So I just wanted to sort them by star level here so I can go down to show the heroes that are currently at five stars. You know, Lestelle is at five stars. Rachel is at five stars, but I don't plan to build her up. Sage of the Trees is at five stars, but I do plan to build him up. Reen is at 5 stars, and I want to build him up. Ledin was at 5 stars. He just got to 150 shards, so I'm actually going to upgrade him to 6 stars right now. The main reason I built him up, though, was because I got a duplicate copy of him. He was already at 5 stars, and I got a duplicate, so it just made a lot of sense to raise him up to 6 stars like this, given that's the case. So now I have another 6 star hero in my Ledin. He becomes a much more viable tank for PvP purposes now, and we'll see how that goes. But moving on, Akaya is at 99 out of 150, so that's going to be 51 shards, and if you divide 51 by 3, that's 17 days. So 17 days of grinding to raise Akaya up to 6 stars. Bernhard actually is at 52 out of 150, so he's another character that I can grind up to 6 stars, especially since he becomes much more viable in the near future. But that's going to be uh, put off for now. That assumes I get you know a balanced blade and apex boots for him and all that stuff, so I'm not in any rush to build Bernhard up to 6 stars. And it might be that I don't actually need the apex boots for Bernhard, maybe I want more defense instead to increase his tankiness, and in that kind of situation, the defense increasing item is Divine Boots. Right? So I might end up using a Divine Boots instead of Apex Boots on him. So that's something worth considering. Um, and I might not need that. I might not need that accessory, and instead I just need a balanced blade. So we'll see about that for Bernhardt. Um, no rush for that. No. Angelina, I no longer have any plans to build up to six stars, just can't fit her in. Leonhard <laughs> has been stuck in this state for a very long time. He was halfway up to six stars and then I realized I'm no longer using my Apex box so he just got abandoned like this. I don't think I'm going to move him into my Apex box anyways so it's fine to leave him like this. Sigma is also at 99 out of 150 just like Akaya so 17 days to finish him off as well. Not a, not a high priority until his SP class gets released. So I won't worry about it too much like that right now. And then the rest, I'm not that interested in grinding. Okay. So, but you can see, there's a whole bunch of characters, even right now, that I would want to raise up to 6 stars if possible. So, annoyance. <laughs> Definitely something I have to consider and kind of figure out my plans, especially with all the new heroes to build. In terms of my... Oops, wrong one. In terms of my ga hero gallery, which people always want to know about, let's briefly show it. So, Langrissa Mobile Chapter 1, I'm only missing Amelia. I actually had the opportunity to get her and I just skipped it, but eventually I'll pick her up, I'm sure. Langrissa Mobile Chapter 2, the only one that I'm missing at this time is Helena. And she comes on a Destiny Summon banner for me, so she is a guaranteed hero in the near future. Uh, Langrisser 1, everybody. Langrisser 2, everybody. Langrisser 3, everybody. Langrisser 4, I have everyone. Langrisser 5 is everyone as well. And then Langrisser Reincarnation is currently missing Rosalia. Okay. Rosalia though is probably going to appear in my party very very soon because... Quickly going to the store. 
I have not yet purchased the Celebration Fortune Bag. There is still eight days on it. I am going to buy it and I'm just planning on buying it with the next Echoes of Light. So the way that would work is I purchased one Echoes of Light. I purchased one thing during this current Echoes of Light so that I got the two extra Trinity vouchers here as well as 80,000 gold here. So this resets on the 13th and it's currently the 12th, right? So once it's reset, I can buy that the hero one and get the two extra Trinity vouchers once again. So that's my basic plan for buying that celebration gift bag. So in two days, I'll pick it up and then I'll get two extra vouchers for doing so. Just kind of maximizing my reward since I'm not buying, spending on anything else. Right. Um, going back to the hero gallery then, let's show the collaboration heroes, the crossover galleries. So Overlord, I was at pity rate, so I don't have either Albedo or Sheltier, and I'm perfectly okay with that. Even if I got them, there was zero chance of me building them up, right? Especially from three stars, so I'm okay with missing out on both, even though their waifu power is pretty strong. Chairs of Cold Steel, I have all three. Record of Lodas War, I have all four. Uh, Yu Yu Hakusho, I am missing. Togro Bros, and once again, I'm perfectly okay with that. I don't run a single target assault box anyways. Sakura Wars, I have all three. Trails in the Sky, I have everyone. So you can see that there are now, I guess, three heroes missing, but that's fine. There are none of those three heroes were heroes that I ever planned to build. All right. So that covers the heroes. I mean, I sometimes get asked about my equipment, you know, whether or not, what kind of equipment I'm missing. Mostly it's just like exclusives. Like for example here, it just shows two exclusives that I'm missing. So I have all the weapons. Armor wise, it should all be exclusives once again that I'm missing. Yep, take a quick look, they were all exclusives. Headgear wise, currently it should also be all exclusives on this page. I don't remember missing anything else other than exclusives. So taking a quick look, that confirmed it. And then the accessories, I mean, the three that I'm missing that are being shown right now are all exclusive as well. So I do have one copy of every single non-exclusive item in the game now. So that's why I'm just farming up for items that I truly want for PvP, rather than caring about the generic items. In terms of the training ground, um... I'm kind of at a crossroads right now, in large part because the new techs are getting released very, very soon. And the new techs apparently are super expensive. Right? In addition to building up the new soldiers, there's also that new tech that raises all stats. So it increases both, it increases attack, hit points, defense, and magic defense by 1% per upgrade level, and it has 10 upgrade levels. So when you have that maxed out, you can have 80% Hit points, 80% attack, 80% defense, 80% magic defense increase on your characters. Your soldiers, that is. The reason why I'm at a crossroads is because those techs are apparently very, very expensive to upgrade. Uh, I heard that for to raise it up to level 10, you need something like something like 1500 books or something. I'm not sure yet, you know, that's what I heard rumors about. So given that you need that many books, you're going to have to farm like mad for it. So wait and see, I suppose. So given that's the case, I don't know what's going to happen. Like, do I have to go back to farming Flyer and Holy and Training Ground instead of focusing on new training grounds to make them more usable? We'll see. But yeah, I mean, that's probably what I'm going to be doing. Um, my, my current plans is to finish up the Flyer Training Ground and finish up what I need in the Holy Training Ground so that with the new text I can get the most benefit. Like for example, you know, text like Clear Impurities. All Holy units gain 70% attack and defense when fighting against mixed forces. It's a great tech for Holy units. And we're going to get a few new Holy Soldiers that are usable, like the Punishers, which offered various tanks revival, right? 
So that's a tech that I'm probably going to have to upgrade along with whatever that, well, along with the new Punisher soldiers, along with that new tech. So, yeah, that's my current status for the whole Indian training ground. Flyer and Aquatic will have, I probably have to finish up ground air coordination, finish up steel wing warriors, finish up this tech, joint defense training, and also finish up aerobatics. So actually, I realized that my Flyer and Aquatic has much more work to do than I previously thought. In addition, the new techs would be, because each new tech is class specific, there's going to be one tech for an Aquatic soldier and one tech for a Flyer soldier, which is not good. Yeah, so, uh, side note, the Holy and Demon training ground will have one tech for Holy, one tech for Mage, one tech for Demon, as a side note. So that covers those two training grounds, right? Cavalry would probably need the Cavalry tech upgrade. And then that's before I look into you know, the newer training grounds that I haven't really built. Like, for example, I'm going to have to upgrade this Archer and Assassin further to make them have 80% attack increase, right? Lancer and Infantry are probably going to be abandoned once again because I just can't upgrade them, don't have the resources to. So it just shows you know, training ground upgrades eternally lack materials for them. Is there anything else to mention at this point? I don't really think so. So really it's just I'm getting ready for the next season of Apex Arena, which should be beginning this coming weekend. Right? And I click on Apex Arena right now, next season starts in three days. So this coming weekend, Apex Arena starts up once again, and we'll see how it goes with my current party. It'll be interesting to play it out. You know? Ideally, I'm hoping to get into Lancaster rank in the first two weeks, then I won't have to worry too much about it until the playoffs. But fingers crossed on that. So that pretty much concludes the current status of my account. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it you know, either interesting or informative. And on that note, Nitro out.